So uh, this project, um, which I have um, been working on for a couple of years and it's not done, is called Tidewater. Um, and it started um, with moving here, um, thinking about uh, what Tidewater is. Um, and as everyone who lives here knows that we are surrounded by water. We have the Atlantic Ocean, we have the Chesapeake Bay, we have five rivers that dissect the Tidewater region. Um, and there's numerous little fingers of water that just go up and down with the tide everywhere. You can't drive very far in Hampton Roads without crossing a bridge, crossing some kind of water. Um, so it surrounds us. The other thing that we have here is a lot of is history. Um, this would be at the northern um, end of um, the Tidewater region and it's on the Pamunkey Indian Reservation. And it is a totem for um, Chief Powhatan. This is where his burial mound is. And you can see in the background, there's some water. So water surrounds this reservation. And the people who live here are very concerned about um, it rising because it is rising and it wiping out their burial grounds. Um, we also have Jamestown here. So Jamestown, 1607, the first uh, full-time English settlement in the United States. Um, we also have um, Point Comfort. In 1619, uh, ships landed here, the White Lion, bringing the first African Americans who were sold as slaves to the colonists in Jamestown. Um, so that's here. This is Tidewater today. This is in Norfolk. This is near the Chrysler Museum. So my interest uh, in history has been going on for quite some time. Um, I'm interested in how the story of history is told, who is glorified in history, and who gets left out of history. Um, I was in the middle of a long-term project photographing in the American West, the mythology of the American West, when the pandemic hit. And I, like everybody else, had to stay home. Um, so I started going to the beach. I started going to Ocean View because I don't live very far from there and walking on the beach just to clear my mind, wrap my head around what was happening. And I started bringing my camera and I started taking pictures. And every time I went up there, which was just about every day, I felt like I was going on vacation because it's really just this beautiful little area where there are always people out, they're friendly, there are a lot of characters, and I just really enjoyed it. I met people, got out and about, not too close. Um, yeah, it was just really interesting to see all the different kinds of people that live in this area. And I started thinking about the water, of course, the water rising, um, the water coming up, and where was it going to go, and how living here, we all just kind of carry on with our life, because what else are we going to do? It's surrounding us, it's coming up, and we just keep on going. So I started to photograph everything I could um, in this area, in Hampton Roads and further up the coast. I used the whole of Tidewater as sort of my region. Um, in Ocean View, where this is, there are, that's the Chesapeake is on the other side of this, and this is just overflow from uh, flooding. And you see these apartments are raised. Um, ev everything in Ocean View is being raised. Um, some boys fishing. This is just about a mile from my house. And they lived on the other side of the bridge, so they had to be careful when they go home that they don't wait too long and the tide gets too high and they can't make it under the bridge. 
Um, on the right is um, Duane and Diamond, and they were on a date. They were walking around in Ocean View, and I asked them if I could make their portrait and had them stand in front of this house that has been raised. Um, and on the left was my friend Allison had just had a baby and she was in the hospital. So she asked me to go over to her house and let her dogs out. And it was flooding, sunny, beautiful out, but there was water everywhere. Um, on the left is Fort Monroe. And um, I like the mix of the old, the new, and the water. On the right is uh, Nelson, and I was driving along and I saw Nelson uh, by this water, so of course I had to stop and talk to him. And Nelson was on his way to the smoke shop, and he was a little frustrated because he'd had to go a couple blocks out of his way to get his daily smokes. So I drove over to the smoke shop for him, got him some smokes, and brought them back because um, the water was everywhere. Uh, this was just last week. This is down in, this was in Ocean View. And um, it's just kind of an example of how life is happening. Life is being lived. Life just goes on. You just sort of deal with it. Um, on the left is Kyla and Desiree. They've been friends since second grade. Um, and they were just goofing around at the beach, and I love their uh, matching Crocs. And on the right, I can't remember his name, but he was just walking around with that towel, and I asked him if he would let me photograph him. Um, this is at the Hermitage, looking west out towards the um, shipping terminal, and those sticks um, coming up is some sort of a wetlands restoration. Um, on the left is a scene at the docks in Newport News. And on the right is Mike, who um, travels all over the world. He's some specialist um, in fixing big ship motors. Um, that was in Hampton. Uh, this was at an estate sale around the corner from my house. And I... I'm always looking for a sense of place. You know, what is there in this place, around this place that shows us, that points to us, points out to us what this place is like. Um, this I found to be kind of an interesting matchup when I just did this um, on the, in, in talking about history and place. Um, on the left is a canon uh, that commemorates the landing of the British General Edward Braddock in Hampton in 1755 um, for the first real battle of the French and Indian War. And on the right is a, um, a commemorative painting for W. Hale Thomas, who was Thompson, who was a civil rights leader in Newport News. So again, looking at how the story of history is told, how it changes over time. Um, there's a lot of plantations here in Tidewater also, particularly going up the James River past Jamestown. Um, these, uh, this is in Charles City, the picture on the left, and it was sort of a advertising things to tourists. So those are brochures for different um, plantations and for some jam. You can get some homemade jam. And on the right was a um, picture that I saw on the corner in an alleyway. Uh, this is the cemetery down the street from my house. Um, on the left is um, in Hampton, Amory's Seafood Market. Um, it floods there a lot. And um, the truck just was in the water and they were gonna just load it right in the water like that. Um, and on the right is um, a neighbor a little ways down from my house. 
Um, so this is in the Pretty Lake section of um, East Beach. And this again is adapting when you know the tide's going to be high, when you know you're on a street that floods, you move your car up and you can see the, um, the kind of pine needles and um, uh, leaf clippings that are, that's where the tide had come up to. So it was now receding and she was out there checking on her car. Um, this is near, this is in Virginia Beach, um, and coastal erosion, buried catamaran being uncovered. Um, that's the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel in the background, um, so 22 miles of bridge over to the eastern shore. This is one of my favorites. On the left is the Super 8 Motel on um, a shore drive. And you can see it, it's facing the Chesapeake and you can see how high the water comes up because of the sand in the parking lot is almost up to the doors. Um, and on the right is Edward and Edward lives at the Super 8 and they give him some odd jobs to do. So what he's doing here is he's shoveling the sand out of the parking lot. So the water has come over the dune and brought the sand with it. And Edward is shoveling the sand back up onto the dune. Sidewalk that ends in water. This is Frank cutting the grass. Mm, on the right is Greg, and he was a retired merchant marine, and his hat says coal jobs. On the left is a, an old map of Tidewater, along with, um, I think it's an army uniform and trunk, because this place is also a big um, military area. Um, this is, again, something that really surprises me, um, is how much new construction is going up close to the water and on streets that flood. I mean, they bring in a lot of fill before they build, but still it just, I have a hard time wrapping my mind around this. So I was photographing the um, con new construction and all the piled up uh, lumber and this octopus just kind of came floating down the street. And this is my last slide. Um, this is just the road. And this is the road I take to work every day. Sometimes I have to go around. A lot of times I have to go around. But this is the road I would like to take to work. Um, so that is, that's all I've got. <laughs> that's incredible, Greta. Thank you so much for sharing. There's a couple that just give me chills. Um, we did have one question come up, but I should have mentioned that earlier. If anybody ever wants to pose questions over the course of these presentations, just pop them in the Q&A. And there also will be a question and answer at the very end. But because this one's so posed to you, I'm just going to throw it out there. Is the Charles City slide with a plantation brochure showing flood damage on the background wall? Because that would be poetic. Because, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think, I don't know. You know, it's more like it was just super moldy because it's so wet everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that water went up that high, but water had probably been through the building or through the, it was a small building and it just never gets kind of aired out. So it was definitely yeah. water damage. Okay. Water related, <laughs> yes. moldy water related. Um, another question just jumped up, when and where will Greta's collection of photography be available? One piece is on view at the Barry right now. I know you have a project coming up with the Chrysler. Is there anywhere else that people can see your work? Not right now. You can see it on my website, um, which is just gretapratt.com. And hopefully, you know, 
it'll pop up some other places, but right now <laughs> it's going to be at the Chrysler and two photographs at the Chrysler and just keep working on it. Great. Well, thank you so much, Greta.